Okay, today we're going to talk about acids and bases, and this will be an introduction to acids and bases where we talk about the three different theories of what an acid and what a base is, and then we'll do some example problems. So why don't we get right to it and talk about what is an acid. So let me get myself a pen here, and the first thing we have to do is, is define what an acid is. And what you will see is that there are three descriptions of what acids and bases are. So the first one that we're going to talk about, we're going to refer to as Arrhenius acids. So in other words, we're going to define an acid according to the Arrhenius definition. And this definition says that an acid is a substance that produces the hydrogen ion, ions in aqueous solution. So, we all know that HCl is hydrochloric acid, so it acts as an acid. The reason it's an acid, according to Arrhenius, is that when we put HCl in solution, it dissociates. What that means is it breaks into its ions. So, for example, HCl is made up of the H plus ion and the Cl minus ion. So, when we put that compound in water, it's going to dissociate into the H plus ion and the chloride ion. The fact that that H plus ion is produced is what makes it an Arrhenius acid. So if we have another acid that we're familiar with, HNO3, which we know is nitric acid, the same thing. You put HNO3 into water and it's going to break apart into its ions. It'll form the H plus ion and the polyatomic nitrate. If you think back to your naming, we know that that's the positive part and that polyatomic is the negative part. So really all we're doing is, is writing the individual ions that are formed. And again, since that H plus is present, that's what tells us that it's an acid. H2SO4 we know is sulfuric acid and it will do the same thing and there's different ways to describe how H2SO4 breaks apart, but what we're going to say is that one hydrogen comes off the compound, and then what's left, if you took one hydrogen away from here, you would still have one there, whoops, plus the SO4, and that would have a one minus charge also. So sulfuric acid is an acid because that H plus is present. Okay, let's talk about what bases are according to the Arrhenius theory. All right, according to Arrhenius, a base is a substance that produces the hydroxide ion in aqueous solution. So it's the same idea. If you put sodium hydroxide into an aqueous solution or put it into water, it'll break up into its ions, Na plus and OH minus. The fact that that OH is produced or present makes it a base according to Arrhenius. So again, if hydrogen is present, we call the compound an acid. If the hydroxide is present, we call it a base. Now the one thing you don't want to do is say, well, hold on, there's a hydrogen there. Yes, but it's not the hydrogen ion. It's part of the polyatomic OH. Now with bases, sometimes we have subscripts behind the polyatomic hydroxide, and we have to take that into account. So for example, if calcium hydroxide breaks up into its ions, it forms the calcium ion, but it also forms the hydroxide ion, but there's two of them. And the convention is then to write the two as a coefficient. So there are two hydroxides produced for every one calcium hydroxide compound that breaks apart or dissociates. Lithium hydroxide, we have the lithium ion and the hydroxide ion. So it's a base according to the Arrhenius theory. Okay, let's take a look now at another theory, and this theory is called the Bronsted-Lowry theory. 
According to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid is a proton donor. Now remember, a proton is the same thing as a hydrogen ion. So we'll call the hydrogen ion either just that, the hydrogen ion, or we can also call it a proton. The hydrogen atom is made up of one proton and one electron, so if you remove that electron and give it a positive charge, the only thing left is a proton. So oftentimes, a hydrogen ion is referred to as a proton. According to the Bronsted theory, a base is a proton acceptor. So when you're trying to decide if something is a Bronsted, Lowry, acid, or base, what you need are two reactants and the products. In other words, you're trying to determine which of these reactants is the acid and which one is the base. The idea is this one is either going to take a hydrogen from that one or this one is going to take a hydrogen from that one. In other words, they exchange a hydrogen. One gives and one takes. To determine what the compound does, you have to look at what it becomes after it either gives away the hydrogen or takes one. For example, NH3 clearly becomes NH4. And it did that by gaining a hydrogen. So if NH3 takes a hydrogen from water to become NH4, the NH3 is the base. The water had to give away the hydrogen to NH3, so it's the acid. Now if you look at the two products, I'm sorry, once the, the H2O gives away the hydrogen, it loses one of its hydrogens and becomes OH. So if we look at these two products and read the reaction in reverse, the same thing. NH4 gives one of its hydrogens to OH, so NH4 becomes NH3. So over here, the NH4 is the acid, the OH, takes the hydrogen, so it's the base. So we say that NH3 and NH4 plus are conjugate acid-base pairs. H2O and OH are conjugate acid-base pairs. But it's also important to realize that would be the base, that would be the acid for the reaction in this direction, that would be the acid, that would be the base for the reaction in that direction. All right, let's talk about one last theory, and this is the theory of acids and bases that we'll use the least, but we'll, we'll, we'll discuss what it is anyway. And this is referred to as Lewis acid-base theory. According to the Lewis theory, an acid is an electron pair acceptor, and a base is an electron pair donor. Now I'm going to give a very brief description of what this means, um, and I'm certainly not doing it any justice. Um, when you take organic chemistry, you will talk much more about Lewis acids and bases, and, and the details will be filled in. So anyway, when you, when you look at a Lewis acid-base combination, what you want to do is draw the Lewis structures. So NH3 has that Lewis structure, and BF3 has that Lewis structure. So when these two things react, what they do is they come together and form one compound that, let me just draw the compound here, that are joined together by the fact that that one supplies the electron pair and that one has a region here available for that electron pair to go in. So in other words, this compound comes together with this compound. The NH3 donates the electron pair, so we say it's the base. So it is the base. The BF3 accepts the electron pair, so it's the acid. So in a Lewis acid-base equation, you usually have two compounds, one acting as the acid and one acting as the base, coming together to form one compound. And again, that's really all, all we're going to say about Lewis acids and bases, and you'll, you'll learn about those in much more detail when you take organic chemistry. Okay, what you want to do at this point is 
go to the Moodle site and either download or, or print out um, Worksheet 10.1 and do some practice with that. Okay, that'll do it for an introduction to acids and bases, and we will continue these lessons on further podcasts. Thank you.